Now to an interview you will only see on CBS Mornings. Billionaire philanthropist Bill Gates and Oscar and Grammy winning musician John Baptiste recently traveled to Nigeria to meet with people working to combat hunger and also to bring attention to the growing crisis of malnutrition. That crisis is the focus of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's annual Goalkeepers Report for 2024. The report notes that more than 400 million children worldwide are not getting the nutrients they need to grow and thrive. The highlights, it highlights concrete actions that can save lives. Bill and John are here to talk about it. Good morning. So much brain power and star power in the mm -hmm. studio. Coming from this side. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. So Bill, you said that uh, the world right now is contending with more than it ever has in your adult life. Why are you focusing on child malnutrition this year? And how does that play into the crisis that you see going on worldwide? Well, there's a lot of distraction away from helping the poorest countries, but it's important to remember the kids there, are, you know, 5% still die um, before the age of five. And even the kids that survive, 40% uh, are growing up without the right nutrition. So their brain, their bodies never develop. And we found there are very low cost ways uh, to prevent that. Uh, getting their mother's uh, vitamins during pregnancy, fortifying the food. Uh, these are bullion cubes that you can add vitamin A to. Uh, so we're very excited to say with a little bit of generosity, uh, we can help these kids. And then as they grow up, they become productive and these countries are become self-sufficient. So tell us a little bit more about these products. So these are basically prenatal vitamins, but that are even stronger, right? Um, that was created with uh, Gates Foundation funding and research? Yeah, so we've traditionally given pregnant women uh, two vitamins, folic acid and iron, and those are beneficial. But what we found through our studies was adding uh, 13 more in, which surprisingly only costs <clears throat> a little more than a dollar, that really improves the outcomes. And, uh, you know, so now we're trying to make sure every pregnant woman in Africa, where diets don't give them enough of these vitamins, uh, that they have access. There's nothing more heart-wrenching than uh, a picture of a child who, for want of nutrition, would be growing and thriving. And John, you recently traveled to Nigeria. You met up with Bill there. Why did you want to get involved in this issue? What did you see there? Uh, tell us about it. Well, first off, we need more love in the world. And my belief is that in this next phase of my life and creativity, as I make music and art, there needs to be a usage of the music to power us to be the best version of humanity that we can be. There's too much in the world for people to not have the basic human rights. Talk about food, water, healthcare, things that in this past year, you know, with my wife and our situation, mm. we didn't have this basic just the basic needs in our life, I don't know what we would do. And solutions don't come in silos. So I'm on a learning journey, mm -hmm. trying to figure out, okay, what is there that we can all get behind that doesn't divide us? What is it that we can all get behind across the world? And what issues that are common issues can we solve? As simple as that. And then how do you motivate people to have empathy and to rise to the occasion? Yeah. How do we get there? That's and, why I'm here. And, and Bill, speaking of that, how, how do we get there? What are some of these concrete steps? Because you, you remain optimistic. <laughs> well, we've had progress. Uh, at the turn of the century, over 10 million children died under the age of five. And before the pandemic, we'd cut that in half. So five million. And those are very big numbers. Now, we've been on a plateau, but if we can remind ourselves about the need uh, you know, remember the kids in Africa who we were there to go and actually see. Mm. Uh, we saw a lot of malnourished kids. Then we'll get back on that incredible improvement. John, yeah. what you just said was just so beautifully put. And I know when you were in Nigeria, you were also inspired or moved to record some music, to make some music. Tell us about that moment. Yeah. The motherland. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the job. Come you. on. We, we, we had a good bop going, Bill and I. Uh, oh, yeah. Bill, Bill was grooving too? Yeah, he had some stuff going. <laughs> I said, oh my okay, goodness, I, I didn't moves, know. Bill. Go. But, but you know, it was one of those moments where 
the connection between the diaspora in New Orleans and the Caribbean, you just realize that we're all connected. Yeah. And when I'm in that space and have those sort of epiphanies, I have to create. And that's one way I think we can find solutions is actually through creativity. We often underestimate the power of the arts and culture and, and music in solving world issues. And that's what's beautiful about having this opportunity to collaborate and be able to solve some things. Right. We can also really have a good time doing it. Mm. <laughs> now, Bill, when I was reading your goalkeeper's report, one thing I had to read twice because I couldn't believe that it was true was that climate change was having such a huge impact on child malnutrition. You wrote um, in the report that between now and 2050, 40 million more children will be will have stunted growth if we don't do something about climate change. Tell us about that connection and what we can do. Well, I think one thing that could draw people in to help out is that the rich world is created the climate change problem. And yet, the most of the suffering from climate change will be in poor countries near the equator, including Nigeria. And so, you know, it's incumbent upon us to take quite cheap solutions and make sure that either through our own generosity or the government's generosity, we're helping these kids out, helping them thrive. And so it's pretty stunning that Climate change is a headwind. You know, Africa's got debts, they've got conflicts, uh, but it's really climate change that's making it harder than ever. You know, guys, in our, in our final moments here, I do wanna hear more about your performance tonight at the Goalkeepers event. But first, Bill, uh, since we're talking about uh, the world and the fate of it, we mm -hmm. should consider the op-ed you recently wrote, which talked about how elections here in America are about more than just America. And I think it raises the question of what you would like to know more when it comes to Kamala Harris's approach to the world, her philosophy, and if you don't know enough already, Donald Trump's. Well, on the issues that uh, my foundation works on, climate change, you know, generosity, continuing the HIV uh, medicines that have saved tens of millions of lives, there's a pretty strong contrast, you know, between the candidates. Uh, one would continue those programs and the other one doesn't, doesn't even see uh, climate change is, as a real thing. Mm. John, right. you got a palate cleanse tonight with a performance, <laughs> everybody uh, be bopping around? Yes, that's yeah, right. Yeah. You know, music yeah. washes away the dust of everyday life. Yeah. Right. Amen. And you know and John, we have it. Just real quick before you go. Yes. Uh, am I going to see you in New Orleans uh, during the Super Bowl halftime show? Oh, you, I, I Ooh, can't uh, see. It, uh, oh, wow. Wow. Be continue. <laughs> Be continue. You caught me off guard right there. Dude. I know I did. <laughs> wow. All right, well, on that note, John Matisse and Bill Gates, thank you so much for joining us for the work that you both do. You need some political do. training, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to not answer a question. <laughs>